Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by John Donne, who lived from 1572 to 1631. I was surprised when looking back at the course of this show that it looks like I've only done one Donne poem. Back in the first few weeks, I did Death Be Not Proud, which is a great poem. But today I wanted to do another one of his sonnets, one of his holy sonnets, called At the Round Earth's Imagined Corners. Death Be Not Proud is, is one of the holy sonnets, and so is Batter My Heart, Three-Personed God, which is one of his most famous poems. Those are his two most famous poems. But this one, At the Round Earth's Imagined Corners, also is included as a holy sonnet. John Donne was famously a metaphysical poet, and this is one of the poems that certainly captures that sense in his work. It goes like this. At the round earth's imagined corners, blow your trumpets, angels, and arise, arise from death, you numberless infinities of souls, and to your scattered bodies go, all whom the flood did and fire shall o'erthrow, all whom war, dearth, age, augs, tyrannies, despair, law, chance hath slain, and you whose eyes shall behold God and never taste death's woe. But let them sleep, Lord, and me mourn a space. For if above all else my sins abound, tis late to ask abundance of thy grace when we are there. Here on this lowly ground, teach me how to repent. For that's as good as if thou hadst sealed my pardon with thy blood. It seemed appropriate to read a poem about repentance during Lent uh, for those listeners who are participating in Lent with your um, churches and communities. William Harmon says that this poem like Death Be Not Proud and Batter My Heart, Three-Person God, are, quote, all sinewy physical expressions of metaphysical theology. All three, in fact, combine direct address with strong imperative verbs, devices that add immediacy and concreteness, end quote. Sinewy physical expressions of metaphysical theology is a wonderful phrase. Someone who loves poetry would write that phrase. This certainly seems to be a poem about the end times, about Judgment Day, about the final judgment. And I find that part of it interesting, but I also find a lot of the um, paradoxes and, and that sort of thing that Dunn laces in this poem. For example, even the first line, the title, the title line, at the round earth's imagined corners. A round earth doesn't have corners, of course. But as Harmon notes, one of the things about angels is that they're not bound by laws of physics. God is not bound by laws of physics, which when it comes to repentance is, and forgiveness, which when it comes to salvation, is, is a great thing. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. It's one of the defining characteristics. It's one of the things that enables uh, repentance and forgiveness to be possible and meaningful. The first eight lines of this sonnet, before we get our turn, are about the ways that people die, the things that overthrow people. Um, it, it's, it, he calls out to the angels to blow their trumpets. And then he says, Arise from death, you numberless infinities of souls, and to your scattered bodies go, all whom... Flood and fire killed, all who died in war and died of tyrannies and age, of ox, despair, by chance. All of you who were slain by those things, arise and go to your body and never taste death's woe. But then after the turn, the sort of triumphant nature of, uh, <laughs> of what he's saying there seems to be lost in his focus. Because he seems to be saying, Ah, but let them sleep, Lord, and me mourn a while, for I'm not quite ready for Judgment Day now. And there's that realization, it seems, in the poet, that he needs to mourn for those who are dead, who he references before, but also for himself. Now, mourning, it seems, leads to repentance. It seems that he's saying, I need more time, I need more time to repent. And so this is a poem that, like many sonnets, ends in a very different place than where it begins. It begins at the end with literally the end of the world, but it ends with a call or a, a moment of devotion, of quietness, of prayer. Much like many of the romantic sonnets end with um, commitment to the loved one, to the beloved. This poem ends not in the chaos that is called for at the beginning, but in repentance and quietness. 
So I'll read it one more time. This is At the Round Earth's Imagined Corners by John Donne. At the round earth's imagined corners, blow your trumpets, angels, and arise, arise from death, you numberless infinities of souls, and to your scattered bodies go, all whom the flood did, and fire shall o'erthrow, all whom war, dearth, age, augs, tyrannies, despair, law, chance hath slain, and you whose eyes shall behold God, and never taste death's woe. But let them sleep, Lord, and me mourn a space. For if above all these my sins abound, tis late to ask abundance of thy grace when we are there. Here on this lowly ground, teach me how to repent. For that's as good as if thou hadst sealed my pardon with thy blood. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another one for you.